This is Amit Goswami, consciousness researcher, quantum physicist, and a quantum activist. The question before us is love and relationship. How does quantum physics answer questions about love? Relationship, maybe. Quantum physics has the, con has the concept of non-locality, signalless communication. So indeed, uh, one can say that whereas Newtonian relationship just takes advantage of local communication, quantum physics enables us to go one step further. If we communicate through consciousness, if we become entangled with the other, then we can occasionally even communicate non-locally. And indeed, in the dimensions of feeling, we often do that. We pick up each other's moods. You'll notice that if you have an intimate relationship and your partner is in a bad mood, no time you become in a bad mood. On the other hand, you'll also notice that your partner may have a very jubilant mood, and then he can or she can lift your mood. So in this way, um, this is something that may be not local. But be aware, don't jump into conclusions, because brain also has uh, mirror neurons that mirror the other's behavior. So often, uh, the local behavior, the negative uh, part especially, comes from the uh, mirror neurons. But whenever you are um, having a positive feeling that you are sharing, then there is this question that, are you communicating heart to heart? So non-locality indeed um, goes a little distance because you now recognize that feeling comes from purely quantum energy. It's non-physical. It's not material energy. It's not like any of the energies that you know, radiant energy or potential energy in oil. Uh, it's not anything like that this uh, vital energy. Energy of vitality is non-physical. It comes from uh, liturgical fields or morphogenetic fields which are connected with form and function of organs. You will notice that you feel the feeling in close to the organs that the feeling is related to, the organ function that feeling is related to. For example, the feeling in the heart is related to me versus not me distinction going away, which is indeed a feeling that you are me, you are mine, I am yours, and that is what we call romantic love. So um, indeed, in this way, quantum physics, quantum energy, these things are enabling us to understand some aspects of love. The very interesting question is, can we take this further? In the spiritual tradition, they say you can open the heart so much that you can love anyone. You can love unconditionally. These things are very intriguing. Are there such things? Can the heart be opened further? Can the immune system function extend beyond just this simple uh, response of romantic love? If the immune system function uh, suspends itself, which is when romantic love can occur, can also unconditional love occur? What is the further conditions that we have to satisfy for heart to open to that extent? And one thing is becoming very clear. We don't even hear the heart most of the time. We don't even hear the heart because the brain and its reasoning thoughts, they drown out all the little voices of the heart. Women sometimes hear the heart, they hear the heart a little bit better than men, and they chastise men saying that, open your heart. I had such a case myself, my wife would constantly say, whenever you say you love me, I don't feel anything. Try to love from your heart. And I would try, but I didn't know what she means. It took me some time to understand and conceptualize the concept of vital energy. When we understood the scientific nature of it, then it actually became easier. Because I'm a thinking person, I need a reason, a scientific reason to do anything or 
believe anything or trust anything. So I became a believer, and as soon as I became a believer, because I knew the causal relationship of non-physical fields and feeling, I knew the causal relationship that consciousness has with the body, and those knowledges that I discovered from quantum physics helped me to investigate love in the heart. But still, what is the reason there is still a part missing? Because you know, in order to know, you need a knower. We have a knower in the brain. We know this, and I have been talking about this since my first book, self aware Universe. But that requires a memory apparatus and a cognition apparatus. Brain cognizes by knowing with the mind, and indeed there is also memory apparatus in the brain, and therefore the combination gives you the ability to have a self. Can a similar combination exist in such a simple system as thymus gland, which is the seat of the me-not-me me distinction? It was very hard for me to find a memory system. Cognition, yes. The heart cognizes with feeling. But how does it memorize it? And then a recent discovery filled in the gap. Recent discovery was that there is a little brain in the heart. And that contributes to the immune system's ability not only to cognize the thymus gland's ability, not only to cognize, but also to memorize. And the cognition of memory reveals itself as the ability of experiencing itself separate from the rest of the environment. This is a big breakthrough. And indeed, very soon after that, with some creativity, my own heart opened. I found that I can hear my heart independently of my brain. I was talking to a woman, and she was very discordant with me, but indeed, I realized that although my brain is saying, no, 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 this is not right, you just reject this woman, this is not, she's not going to agree with you, but I distinctly heard another voice, not in the reasoning voice of the mind, but a feeling. And that feeling was, continue, love. That was the feeling. This is okay. This is going to be okay. Heart overruled the brain. I was very surprised. I went along with the heart. And it indeed, it worked. It was useful. It was in accordance with the movement of consciousness. So my suggestion is that, uh, you know, uh, people today equate sex with love a lot. Now we have studied these sexual energies, and sexual energies are controlled by the brain mostly, and uh, that is not a good thing. That is not a good thing because love is not a rational thing. It's a feeling thing. Not irrational either, it's non-rational. You have to make room for non-rational things to open yourself to love. And how to do that, the mystery is indeed in the letting go of the brain. But you have to be aware of the heart, of the body, of the feelings in the body, independent of your brain first. It takes a while. But engage in uh, Eastern meditative techniques like Tai Chi and Pranayama, yoga, these things will help you. Even rubbing your pumps like I'm doing and making a little gap and closing your eyes, you will find that there are tingles. And then the follow up these tingles and being these tingles close to the heart or close to the navel, these are called chakra points in the east, will give you direct access to the energies of the heart and energies of the navel. These are the places where we feel love. Navel is where we feel self-love. Heart is the place where we feel other love. And this other love is not romantic, sexual, no. This other love 
can be independent of sex, sex which is choice. Wouldn't it be nice to love everyone? I know many of you would like to do that. And then doing that, the secret of it is all these things that I'm saying. Read my book, Conscientia Quantica, Quantum Consciousness. It will have this and many other answers to puzzling questions. Thank you.